I'm Ed Romero, CEO of Mental Crasher Entertainment. Welcome to the Horde Podcast. Oh no, what happened? You're okay. <laughs> this is Alcatraz when he's not wearing the mask. Down to earth, very cool guy. Next to him is his lovely, amazing girlfriend, Erica. Hi. And we're going to talk about things on our mind. I'm going to go first. This one is really stupid. So, a girl who's 13 years old got sent home because she was considered too sexy. But guess what she was wearing? Definitely question the outfit. She was wearing a school uniform with a pair of glasses and her hair tucked behind her. That's all. Uh, Send the principal to uh, public school. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to read to you what the letter said. I'm not going to mention any names, but just listen to this. Dear Mrs. Whoever, it is with sincere regret that I have had to take the decision to send your daughter home from school today. When she arrived this morning, a number of staff members noticed that her choice of facial look was getting a lot of attention from our male pupils. And when the matter was highlighted to myself, I assessed blank and decided that her choice of hairstyle and type of glasses were inappropriate for educational, for an educational environment. Wow. Oh my God. I am aware that today how is... Do they, huh? How do they get to decide this thing, though? How, how do they get to decide that? What makes them so special they get to, like, decide what they wear? It's like, we don't tell you your f***ing suit looks like shit. I am aware that today is the first day that she has had this particular pair of glasses. And unfortunately, under our strict but vital school uniform policy... These would come under the category of sexually provocative due to their style and size. They deem to be inappropriate for school. And therefore, I will not be able to allow her to come back to school until you have been able to arrange for a more suitable pair of glasses or contact lenses to be provided. Also, her chosen hairstyle will need to be altered as a matter of urgency. Okay, how old were these boys who were getting interest in this girl? You know, if she's pretty enough with no makeup or anything, I, she could wear a potato sack, you know, and they would think she was pretty. You know, they're, they're, they're like dissing her for no freaking reason. They're young teenage boys. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I would ask for your understanding in this matter due to the fact that as your daughter's educational provider, we ultimately have a duty of care to ensure that she is safe at all times. Both myself and my deputy head took the view that if she was getting that amount of attention from male students within the school, she would also be subjected to a similar level of glances from older members of the public on her journey to and from school. As you will no doubt be aware, this is simply a risk we cannot take. Let me get this straight. They're getting a boner because of some glasses she wore? That made her look very pretty, yes. Catholic, Catholic school. Catholic. In my youth, I saw a lot of sexy girls always walking down the street with the big butts, the big breasts, but no one ever complained. It's just how they did that. Yet dudes can wear their pants and show half their butt and no one says anything. Come on now. Why is it only a female? Well, first off, I think those principals don't have a right to say what is appropriate and inappropriate, especially in that situation, go to, like I said, a public school and see what these girls wear. Okay, and you're worried about her hair up and a pair of glasses? But yeah, I, I, seriously, I mean, worry about these girls, you, you're worried about her outside of school? I mean, come on, how many guys get off on just the uniform? Okay, little young teenager in a cute little school uniform, how many guys are going to get all turned on about that? Any guy that looked up porn? A lot of them do look at that, so it's no big surprise. Last part. I have arranged for schoolwork to be emailed to your primary contact address until blank is able to return to school. Please do not hesitate to contact the school office 
if you have any questions about this temporary suspension. Regards, blank, 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 blank. When I read this, I was so disappointed. So now the school system is going to get a panic attack over something small? I think they were targeting her for a whole different reason and just using that as an excuse. To be honest, I don't know. And mm -hmm. that, to me, is what I wanted to talk about. Because that just really, really got into my brain. Why? What the... She's there to learn. I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, she did absolutely nothing wrong because her glasses were a little off and she had her, what, her hair up. You're next, Alcatraz. What's on your mind? Well, I'd pretty much talk about why I'm actually doing this in the first place kind of thing. Um, I'm pretty sure anyone who's known, I had like a GoFundMe campaign for a while. I shared on Facebook quite often. Uh, the Erica Fix Her, uh, Help Erica Fix Her Heart Foundation. Yes. I posted that on my page, by the way. Basically, like, I have a GoFundMe account going, basically to help Erica here um, get this, like, treatment she needs, because she has Lyme disease. And she has to take whatever this is to, like, subside the uh, effects of it. And it, if she doesn't take the med and everything, it's just, like, makes her, like, really swell up, and it's, like, makes your hands twitch. And I like seeing it. It annoys me. And knowing I can't really do anything about it, Cap, it annoys me too. Yeah, I understand. When you love somebody, you want the best for them. So it, it really hurts when you can't beat the crap out of the thing that's making the, your loved one hurt. You just want to go on her body, hey, Lyme disease, what? POW! Just take the Lyme disease, but it's like, ah, I got it! I've actually seen some of your streams. They're very entertaining. You have a personality. I like watching you make your facial expressions. You're so alive with everything you do. I even saw the uh -huh. video with the um, GTA. You cursed those dudes out. That was hilarious. Hell yeah. Freaking little kids thinking they're going to be badass on GTA. Oh, f*** you. Shut the fuck up, man. It's like, hey, child, is it your bedtime? <laughs> bad little boy. <laughs> Yeah, I can hear him all the way upstairs, trust me. How old are you? Wait, how old are you? Fourteen. Get the f*** out of bed. It's <laughs> <laughs> so talk. Isn't it, isn't it time for you to just start getting ready for bed at your 14 years old? Did you, did you do your homework? <laughs> There's a lot of kids who are that young that they're really ignorant, but I don't blame them. I blame the parents. They should know better. Yeah, I'm not disappointing the sh** out of them. Yeah, they have like should have fired the kids that shit. I freaking started cussing for no reason in some game. I'm like, yo, it could be me. I on the other line of that. Shut the f up. <laughs> that, yeah, that's My kid would never be like that because every time he freaking raises his voice to me, I'm like, <laughs> right in the face. Done. That's some old school discipline right there. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll freaking take the belt and whip your ass a bunch of times. <laughs> Ten times. Ten times. Yeah, no, I get five, to... five, five really good ones. Five really good ones, yeah. I get the free show all the time. <laughs> What's cool, too, is that when I first met Algotroff, I thought he was just a guy in a, um, in a zombie costume. I never had no idea he was a YouTube gamer. His variety of gaming is very extensive. I can't even name half the games he played because I don't even care about games like that. I'm too busy about doing other stuff, but Algatroff, yo, what do you want me to play today? Subscribe and put in the comments below. <laughs> That's what he does. Um, he's very entertaining. I love watching him. There are some YouTube gamers that when you watch them, you get bored, but Algatroff never gets boring. It's just What's he going to say next? What's he going to say next? Yeah. Especially when he starts getting wound up. You get that one person to hit a nerve with him when he's doing these. <laughs> oh, my God. You, uh, you, you'll, you'll never hear the end of it. Neither yeah. will they. I have to tell you, this one guy. I was playing on your account, man. And this one guy. He was playing on Erica's account is what he meant as her character. So, I'm playing... And the guy, I just get into the lobby. He kills me. I'm like, oh, okay. So I sent him a message. What the hell did you do that for? So I'm driving around. He kills me again. I'm like, all right, that's it. I'm going 
after this mother <laughs> right here. I travel, I find him. Like, I go across the freaking, like, desert, and he's driving a bike. I'm like, jump this freaking shit. I'm like, he freaking takes off, goes off radar, and hides. Yeah. I'm like, I sent him a message, I'm like, stop hiding from me. You're going to really hide from level 11? Come on. And he's like, I'm not. He's like, yeah. I'm not My hiding. I'm like, yeah. what are you calling that? So I go, go to like fix the car up, and he comes up behind me and shoots me. I'm like, all right, that's it. I go on the mic. I'm like, dude, pretending that I just like got on, you know, and you were playing, right? I was yeah. like, dude, I just watched the entire thing. You killed her for no reason. What the f***? She's a level 11. You're going to hide from a level 11? She's going, I'm not hiding. I'm like, what did you call you try hard and f- across the map? Off radar, sneaking up on her. Try a little harder. I came out of nowhere and sniped you in the head for no fucking reason. I like them apples. He's like, oh, chill, man. I'm like, chill. You are the people that make this unfun. You are the reason. You are the fucking weakest link. <laughs> I just start going to ham on him. He's like, he actually eventually left the lobby. I actually made this 35 freaking guy left, leave the lobby. He went on about how he was like, different guy, different situation. He kept going on about how he could get bitches and everything. Bitches this, bitches that. I'm like, is that when you were on my I'll touch you on them stripper types. He's like, no, I'm like, what are you going to do? Show him your schlong? I'm like, hey, come on and get it. He's like, that's not what I do. I started getting all nervous on the, on the freaking other end. I'm like, see, at least I can freaking get a girl like me uh, for who I am. You f***ing life. He's like, yo, nigga, I'm not gonna freak. I'm like, nigga, what the f*** do you think I am, one of your boys? Because you're all boys? Because all you'll ever be is a boy and not a man? Like me? You piece of <laughs> And he started going out of him, and he left the lobby completely. Yeah, that's you. Several other people were like, dude, you just, like, made him leave. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. Well, you did too, and I remember you telling me this. You literally broke down what it actually means. Um, I forgot how you explained it. Uh, slave or fool? Yeah, the word nigger actually means uneducated, ignorant fool. It originates back when, like, you know, blacks were slaves and everything. Yeah, there was a few select blacks that weren't slaves, but the, it originated back then before they were free. Even then, the word carried on because, well, a lot of people weren't all that happy with blacks not being slaves anymore. But Abe was like, you know what? This this got to stop. No more slavery. Mm-hmm. Back then, they weren't educated. Like, they were not. Like, they are now. And some of them still aren't educated enough to even freaking comprehend how to freaking live life. So if you think about it, I mean, everyone's like that, though. Everyone. You know, Hispanics, whites, no matter what freaking ethnicity you are, some of them are just the one, the few that are like really douchey and like not educated. So technically speaking, the word nigger targets everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Whether you're white, black, or etc. Oh, it does. Technically, the little white babies and little black babies are born, technically they're niggers. Technically, the little kids are niggers because they're not educated yet. Oh, that's deep. I didn't think about that. Erica's churn. What's on your mind? Um, not all of this. The gaming, Alcatraz, Horror Fest, all these things that we do and stuff. It's like been so amazing with this guy. Yep, this because guy. Because of the point of... Lick my finger. Ah. This guy. But, no, no, hold on. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy right here. <laughs> yeah, like this. I always see, yeah, really introverted. Had a lot of ideas. Can do a lot of things. I can work with liquid latex. I can make applications. I can sew costumes. I can basically do it all. Big time in a Halloween since I was a kid. I needed to get a second job, and that's when I started working up Graveyard, and I first met TJ over here. In his Alcatraz outfit, in the break room, 
eating pizza with his mask still on, and I'm sitting there going, what? I literally showed fuck? up with the entire costume on and left with it. Why? Yeah, I didn't even know what he looked like. Yeah, the- I, for like, I don't know, I don't think I knew what you looked like to the very end. <clears throat> But it was, like, really cool. He'd get pointers on good ways to scare, and, you know, you'd listen to him talking to people and everything. He always got along with everybody. And then, then like, when we hooked up and stuff, he's like, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you're like the female version of me. You like to go places. You like to do things. You're you're into the same things I am and stuff. I was like, all right. But he was a lot of the one, too. I took uh, second place last year at the costume contest at Horror Fest. And... As I what? wouldn't have even have joined it if it wasn't for yeah. TJ. As what? what? What did you dress up as? I was a Renaissance vampire. I sewed a Renaissance outfit and had my hair up, and I have fangs that I, I too, I eat with them on, I drink with them on, I, you know, they just they don't come out until I take them out. And uh, TJ's like, "Hey, let's join the costume contest," and I'm like, "Oh hell no! Look at these people here." I said, "They're a blue face, prosthetics," you know. I'm like. I don't stand a snowball's chance in hell. He's like, oh, come on, let's, let's just do it for fun. I was like, you know, I am being freaking, re- you know, retarded right now. Why not? F*** it. So we did, and standing there, and they're calling the winners, and third place, guy does it professionally. I'm like, there I go. No, nope, I didn't get this, but I'll watch. Then they're like, second place, Renaissance vampire. I stood there like an idiot. <laughs> TJ's behind me going, Go, go, you won. <laughs> <laughs> you sat there looking like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> what do you do? I'm like, go. <laughs> now, he, he's my inspiration to be very outgoing and very, um, really break myself out of a shell I'd been put in for, for a while. And he's like, come on, let's do this. Sure, why not? You know? He'd be like, oh, you're into that too? I mean, he's trying to still teach That's me. That's why you're doing Connecticut Horror Fest. I know, I, know. Oh, I know. I'll do it this year. Yeah, I know. I'll put the time in, too. I'll make sure. I'll be up there the whole time. Okay. But slowly break into this. <laughs> See what I mean? He always convinced me to do something. When he brought you up in conversation, he always spoke about you so greatly with emphasis and with such love. And now I see why. Everything he said was completely true about you. And as you speak and everything... Growing up, I was in a shell of my own, so I had to learn how to come into my own. And when I met Alcatraz at Connecticut in 2016, I'm sitting in the lobby, and I see this guy come in. Wait, hold on. So I took a double look because he looked familiar. Yep. And then I saw him. Hey, zombie dude, it's me. Like, <laughs> uh, who? Me. Remember last year we filmed Life of the Cosplayers? Oh, hey, man, what's up? Well, what's up? And then we got into a whole conversation. I actually made a video called Edwin Introduces Algatroff to show people who he is and everything. And, uh, you know, I thank Thomas here for putting the time in. Speaking of that, it's also because of Thomas. He created the Horde. I have nothing to do with this. He decided to create the Horde. I mean, explain that. Why exactly did you make the Horde? Well, I mean, it's it's to, like, if I go to, like, another convention or whatever, and, like, people want to, you know, follow me there, say I'm, a, I'm an announcer on Facebook every time I go to a convention, and do, like, precursor videos to prep you up, you know, oh, he's going to be there? Oh, he's going to do the now? Oh, okay, okay, you know, just kind of prep you up step by step away. So, like, I created a horde, so when I go to these conventions, people who want to join me like in a, in a zombie horde or whatever, you can dress up as a zombie and follow me through. And just, you know, we can wander around the convention together as that zombie horde. <laughs> that sounds fun. I would love to be a part of that. I'm not really into zombies, but for convention purposes, I'll dress the part. What's up? I'll do it. Um, also, it would be awesome to see Algatroff and Erica the Witch coupled that would be beautiful. I would love yeah. to. I, I would love to see My that. My resurrector. <laughs> Algatroff created this group, and I'm producing it, putting it as a podcast. Something big. <laughs> Come on. Just trying to new. We're all different. We all have different personalities. We all have different things we want to talk about. So I thought, why don't I create a podcast that we can talk about what we feel? And this is only the first episode. I can imagine. Yep. 
this is only going to get better. And I want to thank you, Algatroff, and you, Erica. The timing was a little off, but it turned out really good. I'm looking forward to how this turns out. And the Horde is a free group, by the way, which means if you're part of the Horde, you can be a part of this podcast and talk about stuff with us. Yes. Whatever's on your mind, whatever comes to thought, you know. <gasps> uh, oh, God. He's watching. <laughs> see you all. <laughs> Thanks, Alcatraw. Thanks, Erica. Let's see if we can get more people on board. Absolutely.